Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Maggie Abdullah with Bennett Mercado Hospitality. I hope everyone's having a great day. We are yeah. lucky to have with us um, the area manager of North America with the Art of Travel Japan with us, Marie. Hi, Marie. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you? Good. Her and her team are up at 5 a.m. J um, Japan time, so they are really <laughs> rallying. Um, I Sorry, my dog's in the background. <laughs> Let me mute this. Um, no worries. Um, apologies for that. Um, Marie, I'm going to mute myself because I know you have a great cooking um, demo awaiting us, but I know you want to do kind of overview before uh, we started to the demo. Yes, great. Okay, well, go right ahead. Thanks for the intro. So hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our soba making cooking demo. Soba is one of my personal favorite foods, so I was particularly excited for this session. Uh, as Maggie said, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Marie from The Art of Travel. We are a destination management company that work uh, all over Japan. And together with our partner, Wonder Trunk & Co., we also work on developing and promoting lesser known regions of Japan in order to support local communities. So that's why today we wanted to use this soba cooking demo to introduce you to a really amazing region of Japan, which is fantastic for gastronomy, Yamagata. It isn't somewhere that is well known at all internationally, but I think if you're a foodie in Japan, this is definitely a top destination. So just to tell you a little bit about how we've organized this session, I'm going to give you a quick 10 minute introduction to Yamagata and the food culture there, just so you have some context for what's going to take place. Then we'll have the soba making cooking demonstration. And then after the video, we will have a Q&A session with two of our food experts to discuss everything food and restaurant related in Japan. So, but before I get into any of that, I need to start by speaking to you about soba, because if you are planning to follow along and cook alongside our guest chef, uh, you do need to have the soba already cooked before we start. Uh, you have time to do that while I'm presenting. So just bring the water to a boil, cook the soba for seven minutes, make sure that you rinse really well after you've drained it and make sure that it's cooled down before you start cooking with it. So this seems like as good a time as any to tell you a little bit about soba more generally, as I'm sure you know, soba are noodles that are made essentially from buckwheat and water. Uh, since they can be quite brittle when they're 100% buckwheat, a lot of chefs do add a little bit of wheat flour in there as well. Uh, but they, it is possible to get 100% gluten-free, 100% buckwheat uh, soba as well. Uh, they can be, they're typically eaten either hot or cold. So if they're eaten as a cold dish, that is with a dipping sauce. And as a hot dish, it's usually in a broth like the photo you can see in the top right. But the interesting thing is that there are so many different types of soba all over Japan and each kind of region has their own specialty. So just to give you an example, a kind of interesting example, in Japan's northern Iwate prefecture, the soba specialty is called wanko soba. And basically the soba noodles are served in these tiny bowls alongside some side dishes. And the name of the game is really all you can eat. So they bring you as many balls uh, as you want until you tell them to stop. I believe the record for how many bowls people have eaten in one sitting is like over 500. Uh, but I think like a normal person will do about 30. Meanwhile, in Yamagata, one of the specialties is Ita Soba, which is where soba is served on this kind of long board like you can see pictured here, either for one person or sometimes it's one big board for the entire table. And the cool thing about Yamagata is because there's a lot of uh, farms there that grow buckwheat, you can actually travel to a local farm and learn how to make soba noodles from scratch with a local farmer as well. So I think this is a good time to introduce you a little bit more to Yamagata. Now, if you attended our first session yesterday with Tak, our Yamabushi monk friend, you will already know a little bit about the prefecture, but here is a basic summary. Uh, on the map, you can see that Yamagata is on Japan's other coast to Tokyo. It's in Japan's northern region of Tohoku. 
And it's in a fairly large prefecture that is pretty interesting for its nature because it has both ski resorts and beaches within a fairly small area. And so that means that it has very distinct seasons and also very delicious seasonal delicacies as well. The great thing about Yamagata is it's pretty easy to access from Tokyo. Uh, there are kind of two main access points. You have Yamagata city to the east of the prefecture and then Suryoka to the west of the prefecture. Both are accessible by direct flight from Tokyo in about 60 minutes. And then Yamagata city is also accessible by Shinkansen from Tokyo as well. But we are really here to talk about food. So one thing you should know is that Yamagata is an important agricultural region. Uh, it exports a lot of fruit and in particular cherries. It produces about 70% of all of Japan's cherries. And some of them are very, very high quality and very expensive. So I don't know if you can see in this photo on the left, uh, that small box of cherries with the 12,000 price tag 12,000 is about 120 US dollars. So it's 120 US dollars for that small box of cherries. Uh, but some of the most expensive varieties can go up to $1,000 a box. Just to introduce you to some other specialties in Yamagata, I know that pretty much every prefecture will tell you that they have a ramen specialty, but Yamagata can actually claim that they're a specialist in ramen since statistically they are apparently the largest consumers of ramen in all of Japan. Uh, different parts of Yamagata have different specialties, uh, but one, one specialty that they have here is kind of cold ramen where you would even add some ice cubes to the broth to make it cool. Uh, and then they also have some very good beef, which really gives Kobe beef a run for its money. And also a type of udon that is served with the fermented natto bean, not for everyone, taste. I personally don't like natto, but some people really swear by it. So, And so Yamagata overall is definitely an important place for food, but today we specifically want to focus on the region of Shonai, which is definitely the prefecture's most important region for gastronomy. In fact, Tsurioka uh, is the only city in Japan to have been designated a UNESCO creative city of gastronomy. And a big reason for that, I think, is kind of the relationship between the food, the mountains, and the Yamabushi culture of the region. So again, if you joined our session yesterday, you will know a little bit about this already. But just to recap, uh, the Shonai region is home to the Dewa Sanzan Mountains, or the three holy mountains of Dewa. This is a place of worship for Shonai's Yamabushi monks. And each of the mountains has a special significance. So Mount Haguro symbolizes birth, Mount Gasan symbolizes death and the afterlife, and Mount Yudono symbolizes rebirth. And then in terms of the Yamabushi themselves, these are actually mountain monks who have been around for close to 1,500 years. They practice a religion called Shigendo, which is really interesting. It's kind of a blend of lots of different beliefs and religions. It mixes Buddhism, Shintoism, Taoism, native animism. Uh, but one of the main cornerstones of this religion is this deep respect for nature and for the mountains. And so I think that you can really find that deep respect for nature in the area's cuisine. Uh, but also you kind of find this interesting concern for survival because the monks during their training, they really did have to subsist in, on whatever they could find in the mountains. And so that is really reflected in Shonai's food specialties today. A lot of the cuisine uses seasonal mountain vegetables that have been handpicked and foraged in the mountains. And then the region's also famous for its dadachamame beans, which is kind of thought to be one of the best types of edamame in the world. And then also for this special kind of sesame tofu as well. And so one of the best places in the entire region to really experience delicious sansai ryori cuisine that uses mountain vegetables is Dewaya restaurant. It looks really simple from the outside, but the food there is really unique and incredible. A lot of uh, kind of food connoisseurs in Japan say that the chef there is really a culinary rising star, uh, but he ever so humbly credits that his food is so delicious because 
uh, there's like ideal conditions created by Mount Gasan, which is nearby and which is where he gets his ingredients in the mountains. He says that the year round kind of cool temperatures combined with the purity of the water from the snow melt creates the most perfect conditions for delicious ingredients. And the really cool thing is that if you go to Dewaya, you can actually go with the chef to forage for ingredients in the mountains and then learn how to cook a meal with them at the restaurant. So we've talked about Santai Viori, but now we also need to talk about another important part of the region's gastronomy, which is Shojin Yori. So you can actually find Shojin Yori all over Japan as this is kind of the traditional Buddhist monk cuisine. But what is really unique about the Dewa Sanzan Shojin Yori is that it didn't just evolve from Buddhism, but it evolved from the needs of the Yamabushi mountain monks. So that's why in this type of Shojin Yori, you have lots of different ways, for example, to preserve and ferment food, because that was an important consideration for the Yamabushi monks when they were trying to survive for days on end in the mountains like hundreds of years ago. And similarly, since Yamabushi have distinct beliefs from Buddhism, this is also one of the only types of shojin yori cuisines where you can find some meat and fish, since uh, Yamabushi are not strict vegetarians in the way that Buddhists are. So without a doubt, one of the best places to taste the Wasanzan shojin yori is going to be Saikan restaurant. First of all, the atmosphere and location of Saikan are really special since the restaurant is located in a former temple at the top of Mount Haguro, the first of the Dewa Sanzan mountains. And this is actually where the cooking demonstration is taking place today. So now I want to introduce you to our chef for this session. This is chef Shinkichi Ito. He has been working at Saikan since 1996. And he's a really interesting person who you know, really welcomes the traditions of Shojin Yori, but also wants to modernize them and make it kind of more up to date for uh, our lives today. And he became pretty well known because he was actually in France in 2011 promoting Shojin Yori. And at that point, he couldn't import any ingredients from Japan after the earthquake and tsunami there. Uh, he wasn't allowed to import any ingredients from there. So he actually created this kind of unique Shojin Yori only from French ingredients. So this, he's credited with this kind of fusion French Shojin Yori style as well. And so in the same way, this talking about this creativity, when we approached him about this cooking demo and told him that we needed him to use only ingredients that were readily available in the US, even though you know, he's not an expert, for example, at making soba dishes, he decided that he would apply some Shojin Yori principles to make some soba dishes from that. And what I thought was really great and interesting is that when he agreed, he said that he was following the Yamabushi principle of uketamo, which means accepting things as they come with an open heart. So let's get to the actual cooking part. Uh, today, Chef Ito is going to teach us how to make three soba dishes. And what we really wanted here was to make something that was going to be easy and that you could genuinely make again in your busy lives. Because I don't know about you, but I've definitely moved from the baking bread portion of the pandemic to the, I don't know what day it is working from home portion. So I just need something that's easy and quick to make, but that still feels very fancy and elevated and healthy as well. Uh, so that's what we've tried to do here. So you don't know, need a ton of cooking utensils to make these dishes beyond the basics. It is helpful if you have a blender and a mortar and pestle to grind the sesame. And so in terms of ingredients, you probably received our ingredients list, but here's just a quick recap for the first dish, which is the tomato and tuna soba salad. These are the ingredients you need. The two bowls in the middle, those are chrysanthemum petals. They are op an optional topping. You could also use mushroom as an optional topping. And then in terms of the kind of main ingredients, we have tomato, tuna, um, mentu, which is a soba sauce. But if you don't have mentu, you can make a similar sauce just with soy sauce. The chef will explain how. Soy sauce, of course, balsamic vinegar, which is optional to taste, olive oil, and then of course, soba noodles. And then for the second dish, which is our tofu and edamame soba salad, uh, you will need edamame, again, the optional chrysanthemum petals, the mensu, the soba, some tofu, 
some sesame or sesame paste if you have it already as a paste, some miso. And then here you can see the kind of tomato sauce. That is actually the sauce from the first dish. And so together with the ingredients from the second dish, we're gonna combine those to make also the third dish, if that makes sense. So without further ado, let's get to the cooking portion. I do want to remind you that we have a Q&A with two food experts after the cooking section. So make sure you stay tuned for that as well. I'm going to hand it over to Maggie to play the cooking video now. Hidden deep in the holy Dewa Sanzan mountains of Yamagata, Saikan restaurant has been serving local Buddhist shojin ryori cuisine for generations. Tucked away along the path to the top of Mount Haguro, the restaurant is located in a former temple and is surrounded by mountain shrines and pagodas. Chef Ito is Saikan's head chef. He uses ingredients foraged in the nearby mountains that he then preserves using local techniques. Today, he will be teaching us how to make soba dishes inspired by the shojin yori cuisine of the Dewa Sanzan Mountains. Dewa Sanzan, Saikan, do this. Shojin yori o tsukuri tomimasu. Ito to moshimasu. Dewa Sanzan no shojin yori, ko ita oyaba no megumi o chushin ni desu ne shokuzai o tsukau wake nan desu kere domo niku ya sakana so ita mono wa ishita ni tsukawazu desu ne. Motomo to kono oyaba no naka de ko shinyo suru yamabushi ga. まあ、生きるために、明日を迎えるためにですね、えー、食べておりました、えー。そんな精進料理であります Every year, we look for wild mushrooms in our usual secret spot. We especially look for the wonderful wild maitake mushroom. But for the past two years, we couldn't find any. So we kept checking every week of the year and finally found some. When you find this type of rare mushroom in the wild, you often need to wait for one or two weeks for it to reach its full size. But by that time, someone else may have picked it. So it takes luck to find these. First, we can prepare some toppings to add to our soba. These chrysanthemum petals add a touch of color and make the dish more fun and playful. Simply remove the petals from the stem by hand and use them raw or lightly boiled. Even after boiling, the petals will maintain their texture. Mushrooms are also a great topping for soba. I'll use these rare maitake mushrooms, which we haven't had for two years. I recommend using your hands to break apart the mushrooms instead of cutting with a knife. The uneven surface will absorb more sauce and create more pronounced flavors. The tops are quite soft, while the bottom part has a pleasant, slightly chewy texture that will remain even after boiling. You can mix in other types of mushrooms as well to create a more complex flavor. You don't need to boil them long before they're ready to strain and use in your soba. Bring the water to a boil and then add the soba noodles and cook them for seven minutes. After seven minutes, Drain the noodles and rinse them under cold water. For this first dish, we are going to make a sauce from tomato and tuna. In Japan and some stores in the US, you can buy a noodle sauce called mensui. え、日本ではあの麺つゆというものがあの市販されておりますので、え、それでこう
、おそばに、えー、汁としてですね、加えることができるんですけれども、そういったものがない場合はですね、ただ単にこちらのお水ですね、こちらの水を使うことができるんですけれども、そういったものがない場合はですね、ただ単にこちらのお水ですね、こちらの Or soy sauce and water. In this case, we can just add two tablespoons of soy sauce to some water. Then, when you serve the soba, you can pour this sauce over it. 少し水分を足しているというかですね、えー、こういったものも使えると思います、えー、ではまずトマトを切ります To make the first dish, start by cutting the tomatoes into bite-sized pieces そして、えー、こちらツナ Add the tuna You can use as much as you want based on your taste. Add the mensuyu or equivalent sauce to liquefy the sauce. Add one tablespoon of soy sauce or more to taste. Add olive oil and mix the ingredients together. Add the soba noodles and mix them together with the tomato based sauce. Then serve the soba just like this. Add some toppings like mushrooms or these chrysanthemum petals. I like to use two different colors for a more colorful dish. Here we have the tomato and tuna soba. You can also add some balsamic vinegar to this dish for some extra flavor. Now we can set aside the remainder of tomato tuna sauce we just cooked to use in a different dish. We are now going to cook shira ai, which basically translates to mashed tofu salad. We cook this as shoji ryori dish with miso, mashed tofu, and some wild mountain vegetables. This time, I will make shirai with soba, and I will use edamame beans to add some color and flavor. We are going to cook using these ingredients. Usually, we sell our own homemade sesame paste at the restaurant. But you can make your own by grinding roasted sesame seeds just like this. 
It really takes time and effort to fully grind the sesame, but if you keep doing this, it will eventually turn into a paste like this with a creamy texture. Pat the tofu dry, then put it in the mixer with the mensuyu or soy sauce diluted in water. Add the edamame and the sesame paste. Here in Yamagata, we use our famous dada cha mame beans. Add the sugar and miso. Blend everything together. Put the mixture in a bowl like this. So this is what the sauce made from edamame and tofu looks like. If you use this paste and mix it with wild mountain vegetables, you obtain the dish we call shirai. This time, we are going to use soba instead and mix them with the sauce like this. Serve the soba like this, and again, add some chrysanthemum petals. Add some more edamame to taste. You can also add mushrooms or cooked vegetables. So now we have made shirai with soba. You can also add the tomato tuna sauce to this dish. Serve it just like this. If you compare this with the first dish, this one is creamier as it has more liquid from the shirai. Once again, you can add the chrysanthemum and edamame. On the right hand side, you can see the shirai soba. And on the left hand side, you can see the tomato based shirai soba. The paste is basically made from tofu. You can adjust the taste by adding salt or soy sauce or other spices and condiments. え、
、えー、この出羽三山、えー、この精進料理というものがですね、えー、ここメインでありますので、えー、ぜひ皆様も、えー、修行をしながらですね、えー、苦しい体験をした後に、えー、召し上がるとまた味も格別でありますので、えー、たくさんお越しいただければと思っております、えー、皆様のお,お越し、えー、心待ちにしております All right, so that was just a little bit of an intro. I don't know if you were able to follow along、uh, and make the dish at the same time. Maybe it was a little bit quick.、Uh, but if you have any questions or anything, I thought that I would invite some of our food experts here、uh, to answer any of your questions about food or restaurants or anything else you really want to ask about Japan's cuisine and gastronomy. Uh, so, it's my pleasure to introduce Kanae san and Kohei san.、Uh, Kanae san is actually in her greenhouse right now, I、yes. believe. Yep. Is that That's right? right? Yep. I'm back so, in the greenhouse. <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining us. Can you just tell us what, what we can see behind you in the greenhouse? Yes, it's actually the chrysanthemum flowers. Can you see? Oh, wow. Yeah.、That's So, the, which Chef Ito has just used in the video. Wow. And so, is that something that's, that's common all over Japan? Are chrysanthemum petals something that's very typical of Yamagata?、Uh, well, actually, this is very, very typical in Yamagata. And actually, I would say it's typical in northern, east, north, northeast of Japan, Tohoku area. Because in.、Oh. I'm originally from Shikoku, but I, we don't eat this chrysanthemum much there. Ah, okay. So, so this is something that you use mostly、right. in this region. Cool.、Mm -hmm. right. And so I'm just wondering if you could tell us、uh, just a little bit about yourself and your background.、Uh, I called you a food expert, but you know, what, where does that come from? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I'm Kanae. I、um, oh, live in Shona now. But originally from Shikoku, as I said. And、uh, well, now I'm working with the Wanda Trunk team as a、um, project partner. But um, um, well, actually, my home、uh, in Shikoku is a very old traditional sources brewery. And、uh, so I used to be the succeeded, uh, uh, I used to succeed the family business and used to be the 17th generational president of the company. Wow. wow. <laughs> <laughs> so wow, making、like、things, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, well, I, I started as a kind of this show you toji trainee at the beginning. And、uh, I learned how to make soy sauce for three years. And after that, I、um, developed, I have it kind of promoted by my father and、uh, developed a new product such as the soy salt, which is the、uh, freeze dried soy sauce. And you can use like a salt, you know, bracket over the,、um, the dishes. And、uh, I also in,、um, developed the, the、uh, soy chocolate, which is the、uh, soy sauce flavored chocolate. And I believe that the taste of the soy shoyu and chocolate is now very popular. But you, and then they're using soy sauce as a material for the many sweets. But、uh, when I introduced to the world, it was quite new.、Wow. And、uh, so I visited a lot of restaurants in the US. Uh, yes, including the many famous ones,、uh, and、uh, visited many chefs and、uh, introduced our products. And it was quite successful. But <laughs> actually, I met a guy from here <laughs> <laughs> who's a farmer <laughs> who produced these chrysanthemums. And、uh, we fell in love with each other. So I decided to start my new life. And join him here.、Wow. And then after, yeah, after moving back to, to Yamagata, I started to, to support the local farmers or the small、uh, food industries、uh, who are、um, intended to、um, create the new products, you know, or the,、uh, the, uh, the, to renew all their packages of the, their products. And then, so I built a company. And then now I'm still keep doing that. And um, um, after uh, um, 
joining the the, the tax team, tax the Yamabushi team. Yeah, I started my career as the uh, the travel product um, producers, and uh, so now why I'm here <laughs> with you. Fantastic. And actually, I think you've answered one of the questions that we got, which was, does the art of travel and what with their partner Wonder Trunk offer these types of tours focused on cooking? And yes. so the answer is absolutely. Uh, we have you who is so knowledgeable about food, who can curate some tours. And then we also have uh, Kohei, who's here with us, who is also our other food expert and the best person when it comes to giving restaurant recommendations as well. <laughs> Kohei, thanks so much for joining us. So, Hi, you... good morning, Mali. Good morning, good morning, everyone in US. Oh, so not good morning. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah, good, in Japan is good Just afternoon. for some of us. Just for some <laughs> What time is it? No one knows. Uh, so you actually are from Tokyo, but you decided to move to Yamagata because of the food. Yes, uh, not only the food, but also Yamabushi training. Uh, I did the Yamabushi training two years ago with Tak and Master Hoshino, and uh, they respect the nature. And uh, not only Yamabushi training, uh, the food in Yamagata was so fantastic. And uh, these two years, I'm taking many of the guests or like the travel agencies or journalists. And uh, every time I go to Yamagata, I didn't want to back to, uh, at that time I was living in Los Angeles, but I didn't want to go back home. I just want to keep staying in Yamagata to explore all the, so many beautiful like restaurants, people. And then these two years, oh, it reminds me like really want to keep it, stay in Yamagata. Then after this COVID, my wife and I decided to come back to Japan. Then directly we moved to Yamagata. So here I am now in Yamagata city. And, and what is it about the food in Yamagata that you think is so special compared to, for example, Tokyo? Uh, in Japan, all over Japan, there's so many beautiful uh, places and a nice food. But in Yamagata, there's a mountains and also the sea. And, uh, and the people really uh, respect the their local natural ingredients mm -hmm. and, and there's there was sanzan like a gasan there's so many mushrooms and uh especially they're trying to make the ingredients as very sim uh, simple like they don't focusing on the techniques just as it's simple they make dishes and so we, and also there's a beautiful four season and uh, Mount Gasan like has a very purified water uh, from the snow purified water like after 40, 20, 40 years. So that uh, you once you get the food, it's very, very so fantastic, which I, I was from Tokyo. So it's, there's so many beautiful uh, restaurants in Tokyo, of course. But when I come to Yamagata, every season, every month can find a different uh, vegetables, mushroom, where I never had chance to eat in Tokyo. So that's, I really need to come up to Yamagata to taste it. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of one big reason. That's, that's yes. fantastic. And um, so, oh, please. No, I was going to ask, there was a question. Um, Kohei, you mentioned that you lived in LA, Los Angeles mm -hmm. for a bit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And the question is, any recommendations for shops in LA, New York City, like major cities that that can carry these types of ingredients that you use in the recipes? Uh, if you live in LA, hard... maybe you can make that make a recommendation or an area of town. Uh, so I love the sushi very much. <laughs> so if 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 uh, talking about this kind of natural uh, mm -hmm. ingredients, uh, I really wish everyone can come to the Yamagata. But uh, when talking about Japanese uh, food, maybe one of uh, uh, my wife and I really love sushi. So I actually almost not every week, but often went to the one of the restaurants in Los Angeles called Sushi King. <laughs> the, because uh, there's a four Japanese chefs there and mm -hmm. they keep like many years. 
like more than I think 30 years. I uh, very feel feel like local sushi restaurant feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, there's uh, that's why I kept the, their talking on the counter, sushi chef, and it's feel like a home in Japan. That's good. Yeah. And, um, Marie, do you know of any in New York City? I do not. I don't know if maybe Kanae-san, are you familiar with any places? Not to put you on the spot. I know. No, no pressure. Um, <laughs> but we can definitely find out because on yeah. our team, everyone yeah. is a free, so. Yeah. How about the organic uh, uh, markets? Like, uh, how? what was, I forgot the name, but uh, yeah, it's just ten it's in the center of the New York. Okay. Well, we, we can definitely find, I'm sure there's some specialty stores there that would be, I'm not mm -hmm. as familiar with New York. I know LA better because um, that's where I'm based. Mm -hmm. I will say when Kohei gives these kind of recommendations, what I love is it's not like go to this restaurant. It's always like go to this restaurant and you have to eat in front of the chef that's mm -hmm. second from the left wearing the glasses and ask for this specific dish. So very, very specific <laughs> recommendations as well. Um, but we'll definitely follow up on, on that. Uh, I will say that you can get the mensuyu that was mentioned in the recipe on Amazon though. Not Good to know. Promote. And the recipes are in the session information for on RepFest as well as we can put them on um, the Art of Travels presenter page as well, just to make sure you have it later on. Um, so don't worry, we'll make sure you have it. Um, for to do later, if maybe you couldn't do it live. Any other questions from anybody? These are great. Well, and just so you know, um, Marie is, as she mentioned, is based in Los Angeles, which is fantastic. So if you have requests or you have questions, Marie can answer them in real time. And there's not a six or seven hour delay because um, she does have a team on, on a great team on the ground in Japan, as you can see. And they're all super, super helpful and very knowledgeable, um, a breadth of knowledge. I'm always amazed at how thorough um, the information we get back when we have a, even just a minor question. So um, they're just a great, great team. If you need anything in Japan, the Art of Travel is the one, your go-to. Well, if we don't have any questions, I wanna say thank you all of you for waking up so very early to stay with, to join us today. Um, it means a lot and we appreciate it. And um, I can't wait to make some of those recipes. They, they were easy enough for me and I'm not a very good cook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, if you make them, let us know how it goes. Um, I believe also it started raining very heavily in Yamagata. So that's why Kanaya sounds new. Oh, new please food. go and get dry. <laughs> please. Yeah, 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 it's pouring. All right. And someone has recommended <laughs> Sunrise Mart on Broom Street in New York City, which is true. I have been there and Sunrise Mart is excellent. So thank you, Francois. Thank you, Francois, for the, the, the recommendation for all of us. I appreciate that. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Enjoy your Friday. This is your Friday, correct? Uh, yeah, it is. Yep. Just start Friday your day, for so. you guys. Well, enjoy and, it. Yeah, yeah. And um, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, we do have another session at, uh, I believe, 7... 30 p.m. Eastern time. Correct. 7.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern uh, Standard Time. Okay. Good job. We'll see you guys there. We're going to be heading to Hokkaido next. So Excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Bye. Thank enjoy you. Your Thank you. I really, nice I really hope everyone come to Yamagata to enjoy the Shoujin Bioli here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Welcome. Bye. Bye.